Welcome! I'm about to talk about the story of a certain point of view that gradually became a growing living. After all these years, it's finally time to start giving exposure to what really gave me the interest on using motion picture cameras to create all kinds of my own FMV for my fountain of youth. And at the same time, you'll be beholding the past via a compilation of clips from things that I call the Lost Decom and H videos. Because I've been recording my toys a lot more than uploading. When I was about a month old, I discovered the third season of Shining Time Station. And one of its episodes, Win, Lose, or Draw, was the first one I've seen. This means that the story of Thomas Percy and the Coal was when I first got some glimpses of make-believe train engine characters. Then, after seeing dozens of Shining Time Station episodes, seasons 2 and 3, my parents started buying me some home VHS tapes of the classic Thomas and Friends stories that were from Shining Time Station as storytime sketches. That is, in terms of Americans. Trust Thomas was one of the first ones, and it was a big success for me. But not as big as Thomas and the Special Letter, which counted Don't Judge a Book by Its Cover as the first Thomas and Friends song I ever heard. It was an exciting tune. In almost every video cassette I've gotten, the show was like nothing I had ever seen before in the starters of my life, as if it's one of a kind. Great characters, great scenery, amazing camera angles, and exciting theme song and background music. And to top it all, little toy figures and sets to put the show at the palm of your hands. Meanwhile, we had gotten this VHS camera from my grandparents, and my dad used it to make childhood tapes so we can re-watch our um, best moments again and again. And I still have them to this day. So you might say that I not only grew up with VHS, but in VHS as well. In 1999, before November, we moved out of our home in Atlanta, Georgia, where I had been born and into the house where I live and make my videos today. And there, my favorite TV show and videotaping fun stayed with me for years on end. I had no idea that it would cause results more special than I thought until in 2006, my dad showed me YouTube, a website that would bring back my past from the dead. Dirty Objects and Happily Ever After were the first YouTube videos I ever saw. Two Thomas and Friends episodes in UK version. I never even heard of the UK version of Thomas before and um, thought Michelangelo's um, narration was uh, kind of strange at first, but I got used to it. I wasn't just seeing episodes that my childhood self only saw on rare occasions, but also accidentally discovered fan fiction and reenactments, each made by seemingly a one-person crew. Instantly, I became a huge fan. When I thought and looked back to my old videotapes, I remembered how satisfying they turned out for me and my two folks. One of them, my mom, said that I needed a, uh, a new form of technology to be what I wanted to be. A Thomas and Friends fan fictional YouTuber. But all I had, aside from a bunch of toy trains and a playroom for an imaginary railway, was my familiar VHS video camera. It was better than nothing, so that was the tool I used to imitate what I saw on the internet. I filmed my own Thomas stories and remakes using audio from a TV speaker, with just my family as an audience. One year after starting, I uh, invented my first home main character, Michael the Double Tender Engine, before getting my first digital camera for Christmas. But video editing was altogether new. I needed my dad's help again to put together my first posted YouTube video, a remake on the episode Balled Out. It was really hard, but when we finished, we were all impressed with the way it turned out. Since then, I kept it going with the digital filming and father's editing assistance and slowly learned how to edit alone. As I gained more and more skills, I was trying my best to be just like everyone I've been admiring. I thought I was just goofing around with the things that I loved. 
but now I don't think of myself as that way anymore. I feel more of an actual filmmaker because I lived through different experiences without much film classes but one. I taught them to myself from veterans across the years and learned through trials and errors despite the frustration. And even in the past, tons of internet viewers gave me well-deserved congrats with a balance between lovers and haters, as well as requests to keep me going. When they weren't annoying me first, of course. Now I've developed an interest to write and tell original stories in my own subjects while looking for abilities to use more movie-making techniques and editing programs. Even though some of my old videos are no longer unique for me, I think they hold a revolution for hope according to your own comments. Maybe you can relate to this type of living. Maybe not, but thanks to you, I've got a good feeling of what's ahead of me. Future me, I hope you are happy for what you're responsible for. And now, my thank you to my fan base, the Lost D. Coleman H. videos, a series of videos I filmed in 2008 but never showed them to the public. Don't ask me why. Apparently recording with FMV devices is something I lived for with my passion to be well known. To see the footage I've dug up, you can either go to my home channel or click on the small video box that you see on your screen here. But don't go away. The best part of the anniversary is to come this Christmas.